guys, a brand new merch line that just dropped right now, 6 a.m. It's live in the store, and it's an amazing one. Mike, you are a professional race car driver. That is true. What do you need when you're a race car driver? Uh, number one, safety. No, 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 Fire no, 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 no. You need to look good. We have a whole new drop because race car. I'm gonna grab it right now. Don't move. Close your eyes, actually. Well, he's wearing it, so he already knows. Ah, look at this, you guys. The whole drop's available right now. There are limited quantities. You have to act fast. Beginning with the beautiful hoodie. Look at the details. We have 11 over here in the heart, right? Heart of 11. CDE on the chest. Little detail here. It says, lots, lots of details. Life is too short to drive boring cars. And I mean it. Over here, cello, a little note to the Squadra Corsa. There are no speed limits on the road to success. Damon Fryer designed all this. That is from the brain of Damon Fryer. Over here, revenge on the back. Los Angeles. California because race car. Drive it like you stole it because here at DDE, we literally drive it worse than we stole it. We broke something, I think it was traction. This is available right now. Again, there's not that many available. It's probably already gone. So hurry up right now, go to the store. The varsity jacket's probably my favorite item we've done in ever. Those, Look are, at it. those are sick. It's sick, I right? Like it's perfect for literally every occasion. Job interview, you'll get hired. Looking for a new surgeon at the hospital? Dude, qualifications. Resume. This is what you wear. Same details as the hoodie, but you have the jacket. Perfect for date night. I absolutely love it. Look at the hat. Los Angeles, California, A. Life is too short to drive boring cars. But what I love is it has this little fuzzy detail like a carpet. Isn't that really it's, cool? It's sick. I love these hats. This is all Damon's idea, by the way. Damon spent probably four months on this. Super sick. Over here, we also have the, if you're more of a subtle kind of guy, not like me, I like this one. Black on black DDE detail because race car on the sleeve. This one's like, this one's like a simple one. I have a secret. I haven't told you guys about this. I didn't tell you about this one yet. I'm reaching there for a second. Look at this. Oh, new key tag. The last drop we sold out in the first 17 minutes. We have a new one right here. DDE, black on white on the back, powered by DDE. It does not include the key to the Squadra Corsa. I only have one. Actually, I shouldn't lose that in my pocket real quick. You can't have a full collection without a t-shirt. Right now, it's available in the store at shopdd.com. Again, we only made so many of these. These are all made just for you guys. They're custom. This is run of the mill. The quality is literally unlike anything we've ever done before. As well as one more bonus feature. What if you buy one and you're like, Dave, is it real? I don't believe you. Well, there's a little chip inside here. Take your phone to it. Scan it. It'll verify it's real. Plus, exclusive content just for you guys. I love you. Thank you. Grab some before it's gone. What's up guys? Welcome back. So we have some big updates on the F12. We have some new parts that just showed up, some other parts that we're gonna go pick up. So we got the brand new radiator that is in. We're gonna work on installing that along with the fuel cell in the back of the car. We're also going to go pick up our pistons and rods from CP Carrilla. Those are finished, those are ready to get picked up and I cannot wait to go grab those things and check them out. They're going to be absolutely amazing. You can see right here, we've got the Evo 2 back from SEMA. It looks Amazing. If you guys have not seen this car in person yet, we're gonna actually post up a calendar of all the events that we're going to go to next year so you guys can plan it out. Come out to the track, meet us, check out the cars. This thing needs some work. It needs an oil change. It needs a new setup. We need to go through the whole car, nut and bolt, basically inspect everything, make sure everything is good. We've also got the 550. That's the ongoing air conditioning saga. Finally decided to ditch the OEM air conditioning unit. We've purchased an aftermarket AC unit, so that can get shipped off to its owner. Also got the GT4, the 570 McLaren. As you guys know, we just bought that thing and basically put tires on it and took it to the track. So that needs a service for sure. It needs a good nut and bolt. We've also got, you know, the most important car in here right now is Dave's Squadra Corsa. And the most important project is building a double-decker wing for this thing. That's right, Dave. You want, you want a double-decker wing, right? We got all this stuff to do. Lots of stuff on our plate. But the F12 is really the focus right now and definitely the focus this week. So come on back here. We'll check out these new parts that we got. Sean's actually working on the mounting bracket for the fuel cell. So we've got the main kind of cage welded up. We've put some mounts onto it to raise it up into the right spot. We have the fuel cell over here, somewhat disassembled. We've just taken the cell and pumps and everything out of it, and we're just using the box. It's easier to maneuver. We're not gonna mess any of this stuff up. We have the brand new radiator over here with the dual spall fans, brushless fans. Normal motors have brushes in them. Well, there's a shaft going through there. There's wire windings around it, and on the end of that, there's two brushes, these little metal things that ride, and that's what's connecting it, basically creating like electricity passing through it. These are brushless motors. They don't have those contacts. Those contacts can fail. These ones are variable speed. You've got the main power and ground, and then you've got these other wires for signal. So you can pulse this with the ECU or with a fan controller, and you can have the fans come on slow. You can have them run at different speeds. So it's 
it's not just a huge on with huge amount of airflow when you don't need it. You can control the temperature a little better like that. Really hold it at the ideal temperature. The radiator is a very nice piece. Came with this shroud. It's already bolted on. That's gonna make things easier. So we spec this out to be biggest radiator that we could fit in the back of the car. It's gonna be a challenge and I'm not sure if it's actually gonna work because I've never built a V12 twin turbo 1500 horsepower engine before. I don't know exactly how much cooling capacity it's going to need. I hope this is gonna work because we cannot afford to overheat that $100,000 1500 horsepower V12 Ferrari engine. There's no way that we're gonna let that happen. We're gonna to have to be on top of that cooling system for sure as well as the fuel system. We've got all these like really, really custom parts that are going in this build along with the $40,000, $50,000 base engine. Long process to get all this stuff built. One small thing could mean catastrophe for this engine. Everything has to be perfect. Sean is working on this. Right now it's all welded up, sanding this all down so it's all smooth. We want this car to be a real head turner all the way down to the smallest details. Tim is in the car right now prepping the chassis for that fuel cell cage to be mounted. All this stuff here used to have undercoating on it so all that was stripped down. So that fuel cell cage is gonna mount to this part of the chassis here. But that requires just a lot of detail work. There's glue in between those two panels that get sealed down. So you have gotta torch it out, burn it out before you weld it. Otherwise the weld will get contaminated. We've also got this little like hump back here. And one of those feet for that fuel cell cage is actually gonna lay in there. So that section is gonna to have to get trimmed up, cut a bunch, a little groove in there to mount flush, weld it all in, and we'll be ready to go. I have to measure to the middle and figure out where that foot lands exactly and cut out the right size notch and make it look as clean as possible. So I'm just grinding down these rivets back here because we're gonna have to cut the edge of this lip off just to clear for where the leg of the fuel cell mount is gonna land. Grinding down these studs because they were a little bit in the way when we put the radiator in. This also has to get notched, but before that, to center up the mount before we notch the spot. Tim's got that part cut out, everything's prepped. It's like you guys can get this from here. Yeah. So we will head out and go pick up the pistons and rods. We'll see you guys in a little bit. We're gonna jump into the Carrera Van GT and I know you guys are ready for this. Cold start time. Cold start! gets me so pumped up every time. <laughs> this whole process has taken, well, about two months now from the start of the design. When we handed them the piston, they were able to scan it, draw it up, and then we went back and made some revisions with Michael from D-Sport. We're gonna go from just seeing this 3D model to seeing the actual piston that's forged and machined to exactly our specs for this engine. This is it, we got our box of pistons, our box of rods, the pins that go in the rods that connect to the pistons, and then all of our rings, and then the original piston and rod. I think we get in the van, we'll pop this open and take a look at it because I'm pretty excited and I can't wait till we get back to the shop. Ooh. It's a lot of money, a lot of money I'm carrying right now. Watch out. Make sure I don't drop it. <laughs> no cars coming, okay. We're good. Oh, sick. <laughs> I was working. <laughs> First, Take a peek at one of these rods. Oh man, all 12 of them laid out there. It's like the box isn't big enough to get them to all fit. Oh yeah, that looks really, really good. Woo! Dude, those are so light too. Yeah? Yeah. Ooh, with the skirt coating. That is shiny. Awesome. Oh, I'm not ready yet, I'm not ready yet. I'm trying to pull, trying to close the box. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> the hatch still works. <laughs> Here they are, the pistons and rods. We got them all laid out on the table, looking down and seeing this many pistons and this many rods. I've never built a V12 before. The biggest engine I built was actually a V8. There's a lot more pistons here. A lot more rods. So when we were looking at options to build this engine, we first got a quote from Ferrari for the pistons and rods. And that quote was $30,000 for 12 pistons and 12 rods. Luckily, we were able to go to CP Carrillo. They were able to make us custom parts. All of this stuff cost about $10,000, one third of the price of what it would have cost just to replace those OEM parts from Ferrari. Upgrading parts as well as saving money. 
Sounds like a good win to me. But I want to compare one of these new pistons to one of the old pistons. I mean, first off, you see they have a coating on them on the skirt, and that's an anti-friction coating, so they'll basically move through the bore of the cylinder smoother, less friction, more power to the wheels, less heat. This one that CP uses is actually one that they use for factory OEM stuff like the Corvette Z06. They're using that same coating on those pistons, so that's pretty cool. Also, you can see where it says the uh, pin offset right here. So the pin is slightly moved over, less than a millimeter. The piston is the same this way, but the pin offset is backwards. And that'll depend on what side of the engine that it's on. Exhaust valve reliefs here and the intake valve reliefs. So on one side of the engine, it's gonna be different. So both of the pin offsets are gonna basically be pointing the same way when it's installed. That's because of the direction of the rotation of the crankshaft. We've got the original Ferrari piston. So you can see the difference. Quite a bit taller of a dome here. That's because this was a 13 and a half to one compression piston, and this one's gonna be 11 to one. Looking at the difference in height there, you can see it's quite a bit more on this one. We've also got this pocket here and here, and that was for the direct fuel injection port and actually where the spark plug sits in the cylinder. So it's trying to direct that fuel towards the spark plug. We don't have that anymore because the fuel is going to come in more traditionally through the intake ports rather than directly through the head with a DFI. So that's why we got rid of all of that. There's a lot less sharp edges on the new pistons and any of those sharp edges can create a heat point and cause detonation, which could definitely damage the bearings quickly. And if it's bigger, you can actually bend a rod. Speaking of rods, we've got these H-beam rods. They are quite a bit stronger than the original rod. You can compare side to side a lot stronger, but they also have these cutouts in them. They don't weigh a lot more. We don't have a scale that's precise enough to weigh these and actually get the grams of how much each one of these weighs and see if these are heavier or lighter. I think that the rod's slightly heavier and that's not necessarily something you want you don't want heavier internal parts in your engine. You want them to be as light as possible, but strength plays a huge role in that. So it needs to be strong enough. That's where this comes in. It's not much heavier, but it is quite a bit stronger than this regular I-beam style rod. This also has like tapering here, where this one is square on the top. Ferrari did actually spend quite a bit of time developing these rods. They are very nice parts, but they are not going to hold 1500 horsepower. These ones should have no problem handling 1500 horsepower. I've only got six pistons and six rods in my engine. It makes 1100 horsepower to the wheels. So I don't think there's going to be any issue as long as everything else works together. We already know the turbos are sized appropriately to make 1500 horsepower. All these internal components should help us. We just have to make sure that everything else is good and we don't have any other issues externally that could cause damage to anything in the engine. If we don't have enough fuel, if it's running a little bit lean or if the timing is off or anything like that, you can still blow the engine up. It does not matter how good or how expensive your internal engine parts are, you can still blow an engine up. We're back to work on the F12. Tim's in the car cleaning up some more paint, some more seam sealer, and Sean's making some standoffs to add some mounts to the fuel cell bracket. As soon as they're done with that, we'll hold those in place, we'll tack them in, that'll be ready to go. We'll drop the fuel cell in, make sure that it all fits well, and then we'll move on to mounting the radiator. This is a really important step because if you don't get the seam sealer off and you try to just clean it a little bit and then weld, it'll start pulling the seam sealer through and then it'll contaminate uh, what you're trying to weld, especially with aluminum, it makes it really, like, the welds come out really bad. <laughs> So this is all mocked up. It's all tack welded in place. We're gonna drop the fuel cell box in here, make sure everything is clear. And then if that all looks good, then we'll move on to figuring out how to mount the radiator in here. But first, let's make sure this is in its right spot. Yeah, that looks good there. We got, well, like four or five inches of clearance above the diff. Yeah, just about. That ledge is like perfect fitness. Just, just right there. Nice. Sweet. All right, well that looks good. So I'll bring the radiator over here. Mounting it is gonna be a little bit more challenging. There aren't any brackets, there's no mounts, there's nothing on the radiator currently, so we're gonna have to build everything. So here for now, and then I'll go inside the car. So, back a little more. So we're trying to set the radiator in the car and center it up, and right now it's offset a bit. So that's basically where I envisioned it sitting. The end tanks are a little bit different size. The one with the fittings is a bigger tank, and on this side where it's just a pass-through is smaller. So it's sitting offset, and we can't shift it because right now it's hitting the chassis. Our bar inside the car that we put in to mock it up in a position where, well, it's kind of the only position that it'll fit because of the fittings on the radiator. So if we move that up, 
technically the radiator would sit with more angle and it would clear the top and we'd be able to slide it. But because of those bungs, they're in the way. So I'm gonna cut some strips of aluminum and just use these as spacers in between the roll cage tube and this bar. So that will bring the radiator down a touch. All right, so we cut a couple shims here and hopefully this will be just the right amount to get the core underneath the chassis here so we can slide it around a little bit. All right, I think that is yeah, just enough. Now we can slide it. Got a strip out that lands on the edge of here and down to the chassis with the angle that we want in it. I think that'll work, but I think we do need to cut that bit of floor out there. It's holding it up a bit and it's stopping it from, from moving into the position where it should sit. It's really close. It just needs a little bit, a little bit more clearance there. Bottom of the floor here has a uh, step up. It had a cap there before. I think it was for accessing the fuel filling connection joint. So basically the, the fuel door is here and where that hose went in to the top of the tank. That was like an access point, but that is stopping us from dropping the radiator in exactly where we want it. So it needs to go twist forward a little bit more and that will give us clearance so that the fuel cell lid won't interfere with this at all. But to do that, we're gonna have to cut that out. So I think we'll cut that out right now. Then we'll set the radiator back in here after that's cut out. And I think it's gonna be pretty much a drop in place at that point. Right now the radiator is hitting this spot right here. So we're gonna trim that out. We might end up cutting more later, but we're gonna start out small. So we're just gonna remove this kind of hump area here. So it's all kind of matching this part. We had a gap that was about, probably about a half inch from the radiator to this. And I think that's actually gonna be okay. But the idea is we'll make a big strip of metal that sits in here and fills this gap from here to here. So this whole area will get filled. And then in that plate, gonna be two holes and uh, the radiator will basically weld pins onto the radiator that will drop in and locate on those two spots, mounting the bottom nice and securely. We'll put some rubber grommets in there so that it has a little bit of rubber cushion and also doesn't just metal to metal kind of wear itself out. Drop this thing back in there. We're in. Yeah, just go ahead and start tilting it and then we'll walk it back from here. Okay. Oh, we're still touching this corner a little bit. We can we can trim it up, but right now we're like, we're in a pretty good spot, I think there. Flush. Yeah. So, it you know, if, just it, if it comes like, up like that much, cause we're gonna put a 3 16th plate in there. Yeah, that'll be perfect. So right there is, yeah, we'll have oh, to drop the, that down a little bit more. Right now we can measure the angle from here to the radiator mm. and then we'll know, That'll you know, yeah, our, our 90 degrees off of that will give us the angle of that plate. All right. So, I have to figure out how to get that plate. Yeah, what's the bottom look like? Is it pretty flat all the way across, Tim, on the inside? It's pretty close. I think this side. I mean, we, we could we could grind that little yeah, I think ledge off just a little bit, but I mean, I don't think- The gap looks pretty even. Yeah, no, that looks good. It's all flat. So I just wanted to make sure we weren't gonna have to make some crazy template with a bunch of like steps in yeah, it. Yeah. But I think if we just Not cut that- across. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If you cut that width, then it'll just lay in place and be able to wall that no problem. So the reason that we want the radiator in the exact position where we're putting it with just enough room to get the fuel cell out is, well, you just never know. And the way that I build cars is to try to make everything as serviceable as possible. I doubt that we're gonna have any issues with the fuel cell. And if we need to pull fuel pumps out of it, if a fuel pump fails or something's going on, we can just remove that center part and not have to pull the whole fuel cell. And I just like to make everything as accessible as possible. So here's the drawing of the plate that's gonna sit on the bottom of the radiator, or basically be the mounting point for the bottom of the radiator. It's gonna be about the same size as the bottom of the core here. So this is 735 millimeters long. It's 66 millimeters wide. And the width just happened to work out exactly the same width as what's in the chassis and what we need to achieve the angle that we want. So we've got 66 millimeters here, and then we've got a 25 millimeter offset from here to here where we're gonna weld the pin. I didn't wanna to go to the center. I wanted to stay a little bit closer to the side to give it a little bit more strength next to that weld there. So we'll do 25 millimeters offset to the center of that hole, 33 millimeters offset either way. That's the center of 66. Now Sean can draw this up. We can put some metal in the plasma, cut it out. 
Yep, that'll work. And then we'll actually use that metal to help us locate the pins on the bottom of the radiator so we can weld them in exactly the right spot. And then after all that, we'll take that plate over to the chassis, tack it in place, then put the radiator in and make sure it all fits. We've got our piece all cleaned up and we got the grommets in there that are gonna hold these bungs that we're gonna, or pins that we're gonna weld onto the radiator, square it up, and then we'll use a center punch down from the center, mark it, and then we'll be able to pull this off and keep that pin in the same spot where it needs to be. We'll weld it up and we'll set this thing in the car. Whew. Solid tap, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It is right where we wanted it. So we got the plate tacked in there. I'm gonna drop the radiator in and see if it fits. Did you that? Okay, you got that? There you go. This side, this side lined up, just raise it up. There we go. Okay, you can lift it up a little bit. All right, let me go up here and look at it. Oh, just the uh, fitting. Yeah, the fitting. I know. Okay. Yeah, but that right there is is perfect. It's even gap. Uh, um, I think it's this corner right here. Oh yeah, I see that. Oh, but we're God. but it's just barely touching, if touching. Um, but right now we're good. So at this angle, I'll tack it in place, and then. So the the plate isn't flat right here. That's flat. That side's good. Looks like. But now we we don't have enough angle on the plate. Or on the, the back? The mounting plate. So it's hitting this, right? Yeah. You're just gonna bang that corner. So we came up with this mounting solution basically to have uh, pins welded on the on the bottom of the radiator that are gonna drop into rubber grommets. And the reason we went with this instead of say a bracket that gets bolted down is for vibration. And that is gonna kill a radiator. If you have vibration on the end tanks, you can cause that aluminum to crack and then all your coolant's gonna leak out. So this should help isolate the radiator and give it that a little bit of dampening so that we shouldn't have any issues with it at all. All these parts are starting to come together and uh, in the end this thing I mean this whole build is just going to be amazing okay lift it up a little higher there you go yeah that, that looks good it's still a little bit but yeah I mean this better. looks good this looks good here it's square it's it's just hitting the, the fitting so yeah, okay yeah okay yeah we just need to cut that section off but that's fine yeah it, it, it'll sit flat yep um, Okay, so I'll tack this plate in. This corner right here is getting in the way of the front of the tank here. There's a fitting on it and that's hitting and pushing the radiator up a little bit. So we're gonna cut that little section out of there and then retest fit the radiator. Okay, lift it up a little higher. Yep, there we go. Yeah, that looks spot on here. Angle is the same on the mounting bracket and the radiator. Yes, sir. That's actually really good right there. Just clamping. All right, so we got the bottom mount in place and it looks really good. So the mount is exactly the same angle as the radiator. So that looks great. And the little rubber grommets, you can see there's just that little bit of wiggle in there. So the radiator will be isolated and just have those rubber cushions on it so that when there is vibration, we're not gonna break anything off. I'm happy with that. But now that this is in position, I can start figuring out where to put the electronic water pump. So we're gonna keep the electric water pump that's on the engine and add an electric pump in the back of the car to help with that flow. Because the radiator is mounted in the rear, and originally this had a front mount radiator, so the water pump was sized accordingly to 
pump the water through a couple feet of hose and through the radiator and back into the engine. But now that we're gonna add about 10 feet of hose in this direction and another 10 feet of hose in that direction, it's gonna take a lot more water pump to flow the water correctly. So we're gonna add that electric pump in. And like we were talking about before, the reason that we went with the rear mount radiator, especially on a turbo setup, is this radiator is pretty massive. So trying to fit this in the front of the car in the first place would be difficult. But we also have an oil cooler or maybe two oil coolers, depending on what size they are. And we have front mount intercooler in this thing that's air to air. That's gonna take up a lot of space. And also you would normally do an intercooler in the front. The air coming through the front of the car is getting heated up by that intercooler. And then it's gonna go through the radiator and get even hotter. And then it's gonna go through oil coolers. So when you have all those coolers stacked together, you get heat soak. Now we're separating this, we're bringing it to the back of the car. We've got a much larger radiator and we're not worried about the airflow because when you're sliding sideways, there really isn't any air coming in through the front radiator opening. It is coming and hitting the car sideways, putting it in the back and relying on the fans to pull air rather than airflow through the radiator is what we do in drifting and it works out well. This should be sufficient, I hope, for the power that we're gonna make. Might drop that fuel cell in here and just get a good idea of how everything looks, but it looks like it should drop in and uh, clear the radiator without any issues. So I don't know what you guys think, but I think that it looks awesome. I'm really happy with the packaging. I don't know, it just fits together really well. It looks really good in the back of the car here. We'll have a fuel filler that's gonna come off of here and just come up to the deck lid back here. So we'll be able to do a quick fill without having to open the hatch. We'll have vents, either like some louvers or an opening in that back window area here for all that air to come out. On the inside, I think we might do something with these quarter windows and maybe have like some carbon uh, ducts made to just kind of get air in there. Nothing like tight that we're, you know, kind of forcing air in from the front because that doesn't really matter, but just something on here to help air go in or maybe just a screen with a surround. I'm not sure yet, but we will be blocking all of this off with a firewall. So behind the cage here, all of this will get a uh, sheet metal and seal it all up that the inside of the car is completely separated from all this stuff in the back for safety and obviously heat. We can start with the plumbing now for the radiator, figuring out what fittings we need, figuring out how we're gonna run the lines under the car, where we're gonna put the water pump, probably where we're gonna put the battery as well, because I think underneath the car, where the factory fuel tank was, is gonna be a really good spot for a battery on the passenger side, offset the driver's weight a little bit. Wow, there's a lot of stuff that we still have to do. We're making some good progress here. We need some key components placed in the car. I know we got more parts Parts coming soon. Bell housing should be here tomorrow, I hope. We can pick up the flywheel and our clutch assembly and release bearing. We can bolt all that stuff together, get the engine mounted in the car. Uh, we've actually made some solid engine mounts. We haven't finished them yet because we have to position the engine in the chassis, make sure it's all squared up. So we can finish those off. We can make the transmission mount. And then at that point, we can measure the trans angle, figure out the differential angle, make the mounts for that, measure for a drive shaft, order that, make the shift linkage. Lots of things are gonna start coming together soon. So I hope you guys are enjoying the build of this car. Every time we finish something, more stuff is just gonna start building up and uh, pretty soon this thing is gonna look like a car and uh, well, in a couple months, this thing should be running. Guys, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.